Should we really be screwing with mac and cheese right now? Is Bigfoot in Oklahoma? And why don't I have a baby panda wrapped around my leg? We have much to discuss. Let's take a look on the bright side. and welcome to the bright side. I'm your host Bob Herzog, long time no see and thanks to everyone who reached out to me over the last couple of weeks. That really does mean a lot. Thank you so much. But now I'm back and we continue our quest to find a little more happy and to help me do that. I will once again ask for your assistance. That's right. We're at the groveling part of the program. Now, if you haven't followed the bright side on Facebook or subscribed on YouTube, do that like this video, share it, share the page, click the little drop down menu next to the word more on the Facebook page, write a review. See, the more you do that kind of stuff, the more likely this will show up on one of your cousin's pages. You know, the one who just angry angry all the time about something and maybe it makes them a little happier, maybe happy just long enough that they they don't swat away that butterfly that's near their face and then there's not a tsunami on the other side of the planet. It's the butterfly effect, but like rage based. Anyway, thank you for your consideration. OK, I don't know if I would qualify this as good news, but it is definitely well a thing. Pink mac and cheese and it's flavored like candy. This picture is from Kraft Heinz. It shows what I think we can all agree is the ultimate aphrodisiac. Sure to get things all hot and bothered for you there on Valentine's Day. Hey, baby, how about we eat some janky looking stuff? That approach has always worked for me. The only catch here, though, you can't buy it. If you want to win some, you have to register on CandyCraftMacAndCheese.com. The company is only giving away a thousand boxes. If you sign up and if you win, please let me know. I'm curious, but not so curious as to make the effort myself. This is more my speed. If you want no one to lay a finger on your Butterfinger, check this out. The Ferrero brand recently posted this photo of a Butterfinger flavored spread. The caption reads, we just had the best idea. Just kidding. Unless and the photo says maybe sometime in the future, Twitter and Instagram users were like, yes, do that. I can remember going to TCBY and getting a medium vanilla with Butterfinger, Heath Bar and Caramel. So yeah, I'd be good with that too. And we will be watching now. If unusual food news is not your idea of uplifting material, fret not. We are about to check off a very important bright side box. Oh boy, do we have baby beasties today? Let's start with this video, courtesy of the Reed Park Zoo in Tucson, Arizona. Seems unusual to see snow out there, right? Well, the elephants didn't seem to mind it, especially little Penzi there, that little peewee pachyderm. She chased the flakes around while playing in the mud with her sister Nandi. It's just cute as can be when she's not out enjoying the weather. By the way, zookeepers say Penzi spends most of her time eating. Right now, she's tipping the scales at a whopping 735 pounds. And if all that snow has you feeling kind of chilly and cold, how about this video courtesy of the Everland Resort Zoo in South Korea via YouTube? Look, 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 look. It's a baby giant panda named Fubao. And look at it. It's just it's just clinging to that zookeeper's leg. You've probably seen it already. It's all over the interwebs, but it's just so snugly and it's warm and it's adorable. And I want to be that zookeeper. Six month old Fubao is the first Chinese giant panda born in South Korea, by the way, and the zoo says her name translates to lucky treasure. And now I just feel like we need more panda video. So this is from the Smithsonian National Zoo. Here's Zhao Kiji making his virtual debut because the zoo in DC is closed due to the pandemic. This little five month old's name means little miracle. During the live stream, he, he roamed around with toys, even played a little tug of war there with a zookeeper like you saw. He also snacked on sweet potatoes, which is one of his first solid foods. I either need to hug a panda or be embraced by Jack Black, like warmly for a long period of time. I'll also accept being swaddled in a kangaroo's pouch. Take a look at this video posted by the Taronga Zoo in Sydney, Australia. Look, 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 look. I, I keep saying look, 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 but you have to look, 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 look. Shows a 28 week old Goodfellows tree kangaroo Joey. Just look peeking right out of mama's pouch there right now. The Joey doesn't even have a name. And the zoo says he just recently started. Mama's little head out. Hey, what's going on out there? How you doing? Good to see you. 
That's unbelievable. And then just when you think things can't feel any more down under, the Australian Reptile Park drops this video. It's Ash the Koala and Frankie the Kangaroo and their friends. The park says Ash climbed down from her tree to greet Frankie, and the two just immediately hit it off. Zookeepers say they get irritated whenever they have to be separated. See, like that is my dream, that all of the Australian animals, koalas, kangaroos, platypuses, or platypi, whatever, and wombats, dingoes, they all just hang out. That's how I want life to be. But things unfortunately don't always work out the way I want them to. Take this next story. See, it's gonna make you mad, and that might seem unusual here on the bright side. So instead of focusing on the part that makes you mad, focus on the fact that the right guy was in the right place at the right time, rather than how this tale begins. A 10 week old puppy thrown out with the trash has a second chance at life thanks to the man who found her. My friend Tessa DiTiro has more. Erin Kinzel is sharing some extra cuddles tonight with the puppy that completely changed his day. The 10 week old pup is nestled in bed, safe and cozy, getting cared for at the vet. The Rumpke driver found her in a much different situation. I'm glad that I was there at that right time. Kinzel says he was on his regular route here on Sunlight Drive in Coleraine Township when he saw a backpack thrown to the side of the road. He didn't think much of it until he saw it move. I was in shock, you know, to, to find a bag with a dog inside, but then I'm also was also angry that somebody would just discard a dog like that. Minutes later, the pup was wrapped up in Kinzel's reflective gear, headed to get medical help. Now known as Tipper, a nod to a rumpke truck, the dog has a broken leg that needs amputated. Kinzel says he's bonded with the pup, and they'll share more cuddles in the future. Tipper is staying in the family, set to be adopted by Aaron's father-in-law. It means a lot to me knowing that she'll be in a good home and and not have to worry about being discarded anymore, unwanted. Rumpke's regional vice president offered to pay for all of Tipper's medical expenses. A police report, by the way, has been filed. You know, there's always someone who will take in a puppy, a shelter, a neighbor. I'm just glad Aaron was there. You know, most of our bright side beasties are real. But this guy is only maybe real. And no, that is not video of me shirtless in my backyard. It is that classic old Bigfoot footage that was finally uh, debunked a few years ago. But I bring it up because if you know the actual location of a Sasquatch, and if that location happens to be in Oklahoma, you could be in luck. A member of Oklahoma's House of Representatives is proposing a big change to the state's hunting season. Representative Justin Humphrey says the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation should start a Bigfoot hunting season. The state would issue a hunting license and Bigfoot tag, and anyone who brings Bigfoot in will earn a $25,000 reward. Now, this, this representative hopes Bigfoot hunting season will help drive tourism in his area. But please, don't like kill Harry, friend of the Hendersons. Just be like, hey there, Mr. Squatch. I'm pretending like the Sasquatch is over there. Hey, Mr. Squatch, will you go into town with me just for like a second, and I'll split the cash with you. I do respect the attempt to bump up tourism, though. And hey, this is a pretty cool way to draw a crowd, too. Take a look at this ice castle in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Isn't that awesome? The tourist attraction is one of only four ice castles in the United States. Each one takes about a month to make, so work on this particular castle. Start around Thanksgiving. Crews filled roughly two acres of space with ice building from the ground up, laying down layers of mist icicles that were grown ahead of time. I, I truly, I, I want to go there someday and check that out. I love that. Speaking of ice castles, you know there was a, a movie once called Ice Castles, starred Lynn Holly Johnson, Robbie Benson. It's about a skater overcoming challenges. It's only like 44% on Rotten Tomatoes, though. So how about something a little more real world? You know, sports hardly feel the same during the pandemic. For an Arkansas girl, though, it sounds all the same. In Little Rock, Kyle Deckelbaum introduces us to a cheerleader who is inspiring her community. There's something simple, dare we say, something reassuring about senior night in a small town. Where for a moment, they even cheer for the cheerleaders that spent months shouting from the sidelines. What for fans fizzles into background noise is for Kashmir Albright, a muffled mystery. 
Because in a sport that depends directly on precision, rhythm, and sound, Kashmir hears this. It's just loud. And if she removes her implant, nothing at all. I can't hear anything. Kashmir was deaf at birth. Even this Zoom interview wasn't easy. This might be a little difficult. <laughs> but we'll do it with that. That's just, that's the way it's always been with us, you know. Jerry is Kashmir's grandfather. His son left her in foster care, so he came to the rescue. Family, that's what you do. And she was innocent of all that. At age four, she could not communicate verbally. Point and grunt, mostly. She was an angry little girl. <laughs> Through speech therapy, doctors, and hard work. I really didn't think she'd ever be verbal, but now she's quite verbal at times. <laughs> Kashmir came up with the confidence to try out for cheerleading in eighth grade. Were you afraid to try it? Mm-hmm. Yes, I was afraid. He was afraid? Yeah, I was nervous. I was amazed. Cheer your heart out. Oh Christy Law has coached Kashmir since day one. Everything we do is surrounded by movement, whether it's voices or music or, you know, reacting from the crowd. So what she does is incredibly difficult. Good job, girls. Christy says the key is to demonstrate. Good job, guys. Hey, you need to make sure that when you're pushing up on that ex stunt, you're extending all the way. Five, six, seven, eight. The rest is her gift for timing. Put down five, six, seven, eight. Like a Swiss watch. Five. It's amazing how good her timing is. That's always something I've never understood. So the music will start and we'll count in one, two, three, four, and she'll read our lips. And then just from the first few beats, she can keep on beat through the rest of the routine. Defense, Aerodos, defense. That's hard for people that can hear to do. So it's, it's really amazing. Even more so. We can't really hear you guys with these masks on. In so this I mean, era really of face coverings. Voice, so Incredibly inspired. I don't know that I would have been able to do that. On Friday nights in the fall, Jerry watched with pride. She's my hero, you know, all that she's been through. Representing the cheer team, Casimir Albright. On this Friday night, he's by her side, a reassuring norm with a senior who makes us all rethink them. What she's accomplished, you know, if she can do that, most of us can do anything. I love that. And here's another story worth cheering for. A coffee shop not too far from where I'm standing right now, just across the river, in fact, is creating opportunities for people with special needs. And one of its newer employees just recently moved to this area and says the job could not be a better fit. Another one of my friends, Alexa Helwig, takes us inside Point Perk. It's brewing coffee and opportunity. At the Point Perk in Covington, there's meaning behind each perfectly poured latte. Working here has challenged Jonathan Wiseman in more ways than one. It's good for me because I, I tend to be pretty um, uh, introverted. So working in a coffee shop is just sort of an opportunity for me to get in front of people and, and converse and talk. Wiseman grew up in North Carolina. The trumpet player got a degree in music performance. After graduating, he found himself working at a coffee shop. After that, I got a music teaching job at a place called the Enrichment Center in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, uh, where I taught music to people with disabilities. Years later, Wiseman moved to Cincinnati to get his master's degree at the UC Conservatory of Music. While searching for a job, his passions led him to Covington. And I saw an advertisement that they were looking for a barista, um, which I had done coffee stuff before. Um, and that people with disabilities would be working here. The Point Perk has a history of hiring adults with developmental or intellectual disabilities. The job is a natural fit. Wiseman works here full time, helping them overcome their own challenges. The people that we have working here are pretty independent for the most part, um, but a lot of the things that we work on is just like interacting with customers. Um, just sort of the social element of it. Resulting in more opportunities for his co-workers. Wiseman hopes the Point Perk can help normalize other jobs for people with special needs. There's a, a fit for these people everywhere. Um, they could work any job. You know, they just, some of them require more support for certain things. The Point Perk started giving opportunities to people with special needs in 2015. Nothing like finding that job that fits just right, makes you want to go the extra mile. And so with that in mind, you know, remote learning during the pandemic has been challenging for both students and teachers. And one teacher in Massachusetts has gone 
quite literally the extra mile to connect with his kids. Mike LaCrosse has this one. Hi, Mike. You want to see my boss? Sixth grade science teacher John King is teaching his students from a mobile classroom. Seeing what you still need to get done for science this week. The Lowell Middle School teacher lives on the edge of Townsend. The internet is not strong enough there, so he bought a used bus to find a signal to connect with his students. So that I can actually stand up and write on a whiteboard or talk to the kids and and teach my lessons instead of just sitting in the car all day. John misses teaching his students in person. There's a lot of staring and looking at black boxes on Zoom. John's making the best of remote learning using his bus to hit the road for virtual field trips, showing students the dinosaur footprints in Western Mass and using the beach on the Cape for a lesson on the ocean. It's allowing me to do stuff that I normally couldn't do. Some of John's students are having a hard time with remote learning, which is why he's gone on a couple of house calls. He was here for a good two hours, you know, and my son got a lot of work done. <laughs> Heidi Kamemia's son, Aiden, benefited from a social distance in-person lesson from John. It makes my heart very full, and I appreciate it because my son's going to remember that. And if that's what I have to do to help a kid get his work done, then that's what I'll do. John King, just one of the many the dedicated out. teachers who yes. are not letting the pandemic prevent their students from succeeding. If you have any questions, ask. We've got time for one more now. One more to inspire. You know, you can't really put a price on true friendship. So Mike Bush introduces us to a woman in St. Louis who helped mend a friend's broken heart and then donated her a kidney. <laughs> when it seems like you're walking in circles, sometimes a friend can point you in the right direction. Okay, bye bye. All right. I think we had an instant connection. <laughs> Carol Petrillo on the right says her friend Cindy Mueller saved her life and she isn't exaggerating. They met when they were both working as aides in the Lindbergh School District. I thought she was sweet and just loving and she thought I was nuts and that made, <laughs> and I made her laugh and I am crazier than a lunatic. But Carol's world was shattered into little pieces when her 19 year old son Todd was killed by a drunk driver in June of 2000. Her only comfort was that Todd was an organ donor and helped to save other lives. Three weeks before he died he was doing Christian outreach and an orphanage in Ensenada, Mexico. Cindy was so supportive and helped me get through this. But no one really gets through something like that. And the light inside of her had gone out. I watched this woman lose her will to live. Um, there were times that I would go to her house and get her dressed and drag her to work just so I knew she wouldn't lay in her bed all day. Soon her heart wasn't the only organ that was broken. After years of not taking care of herself, Carol went into stage five kidney failure and her doctor had to put her on dialysis. The problem with dialysis is every year on dialysis, your risk of dying goes up. Your color was a little I off. Know. Her I best know. option was a kidney story. transplant. This was our first picture after. And so her best friend got tested to see if she was a match. I didn't have to think about it. It was an instant thing. My best friend needs a kidney. Almost miraculously, she was a match, but there was a problem. Cindy was overweight and pre-diabetic. And I said, well, I'm, I'm on a journey and I'm losing weight, so we're going to make this happen. With diet and exercise, Cindy lost 54 pounds and then lost her kidney. Last month, doctors at St. Louis University Hospital performed a successful transplant surgery. It's extremely rewarding for us. I mean, that, that's why we went into this field. That's all I can say. It's, it's just rewarding. Cindy calls it a win-win. So in giving her the gift of life, I was also able to give myself the gift of a healthy lifestyle. A good friend can be medicine for life. I love you. I love you. And Carol is promising to make the most of her second chance. You did the hill. Turn, okay. I know I'm doing pretty good on this hill. One thing seems clear. For the rest of their journey, neither of these women will ever walk alone. I've got a lot to live for and so blessed to have a friend like Cindy. Whew. 
having a friend like Cindy is something special. Hey, thanks for spending some time with us. Remember, share this around, right? Everybody needs a little bit more good stuff. Maybe somebody you know needs to take a look on the bright side. Have a good one, everybody.